Here we go. All right, what's going on friends? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to clean your Harman P-Series pellet stove. Now I have the P68. This should be real similar to any of the other P-Series that Harman make. This is gonna be my end of the season cleaning. So I am gonna do everything. I'm gonna be cleaning the entire inside in here, the exhaust. I'm gonna go back in, in the back, take out the ESP probe, take clean that out, put it back in. I'm even gonna do some stuff to keep this from rusting. So I recommend watching this entire video. I'm gonna to try to make this as short as I can. So uh, hopefully I don't drive you crazy. I don't wanna forget, so I'm gonna let you know a nice guy on sells these little plates on Etsy, sent me these. So I have this one and I have this one that he sent me. So he makes a couple different kind. I think he makes three different styles and you can pick all kinds of different pictures on it. Really slick. And I guess when he sent me these two, I was also wondering how in the world am I gonna hook this onto my stove? Well, it comes with magnets already attached to it. So all you gotta do is put it on there. So, so let me go over all the tools that you're gonna need. All these tools here you could probably end up using. Uh, all right, so I got a, a dust pan and a dust brush. Um, you may want some gloves. I use this little tiny nail. You'll see what I use this nail for. So you could, there's probably a couple other things you could use besides a little nail. But paintbrush, this is probably, a, just get an old paintbrush. But this is a really nice tool to have. Just an old toothbrush. Uh, you're probably gonna need a drill. I have a small little putty knife. May I use this bigger one? I have a quarter inch socket and a, what is this one? A 5 16 inch socket. And I think there's like about a four inch extension on that. A pair of pliers, the hammer, this flat tip screwdriver. This is the cleaning tool that came with it. I'm gonna use that a little. You may want some paper towels, a flashlight, some WD-40, glass cleaner. And I am gonna use this at the end, this bag with some zip ties, or if you just have some thin wire to use, you could use some thin wire, but you'll see what I use that for. And I do have this little tiny piece of wood that I made. This is this works for with my shop vac that I have, or my vacuum cleaner, it's not really a shop pack, but the vacuum I use, you'll see what I use this for. And this is two and three sixteenths by two and one eighth. And then I made that circle to fit my shop vac. You'll see what I use that for. The three inch flu, the three inch flu brush to clean out your exhaust. Now I only have two of these flexible rods. That depends on how long your exhaust is. If your exhaust goes, if you're like have this in your living room and your exhaust goes right out your wall, you're only gonna need one of them, one of them flexible rods. If I can, I'll try to put some of this stuff down in the description if you would need to buy any of this stuff. Oh, and I'm gonna use one of these damp rids. All right, let's get to cleaning. One other thing you may want is maybe a mask because it could be a little dusty, but I'm gonna show you one way that you can try to help keep the dust down. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is either, don't just unplug your stove if it is running, but you're gonna either turn the heat way down so this shuts down, or just turn your heat off, but you can't unplug it because it has to go through the, you have to go through the cool down cycle. So you're gonna to wanna to let your stove go through that cool down cycle if it was running, so it completely cools down. And I do recommend if you're not using like a, um, like they make, vacuums that are for these stoves or for wood stoves that has like a metal container. Those are a little safer, but I always hated them. They never seem to have good suction. So I just make sure my vacuum has anything inside of it completely out. So that way if somehow a hot ash got in there, it's not gonna just automatically catch something on fire inside my vacuum cleaner. And I do make sure I clean my filter really, really well. And I'm gonna try to use that least as possible if I can, because I don't want to clog my filter. I do clean that filter out real well, just in, that way it does have really good suction. And I will use my, the exhaust on that just to blow through my exhaust on here. So make sure your stove is completely cooled down. First thing I'm gonna do is clean this glass. Very simple. Now they make all kinds of fancy cleaners. If you know a really, really good cleaner out there for that glass, put that down in my comments and maybe I'll buy some of that cleaner. And I know some people somehow use the ashes and all kinds of crazy things, but I'm just gonna clean it. I'm gonna take my hat off. I hope my, head, my awesome head doesn't blind you because I know I'm gonna end up getting hot. Oh, 
I don't know if you see, I do have a piece of cardboard down here. Kind of nice to have. All right, now that my stove is completely cooled down with the door open, you can also also open your where your pellets go, your hopper, as it will not start up like that. I'm gonna plug it back in because it's gonna keep that fan running. Did you hear that fan? The fan kicked on, that's my exhaust fan. And that's gonna keep sucking some of this dust outside. So you could either, if you already had it plugged in, you could unplug it, plug it back in, or you could just take your dial that's where you set your settings and turn it off and then turn it back on. One or the other, it, will turn, it should turn that fan on. Now I'm gonna start cleaning from the top and go down. Just gonna get some of this biggest ashes down in. Hopefully you're, if your ash pan is completely full right now, you might have to dump that. Mine is not completely full. Just gonna get the biggest part of these on the edges out first. You notice how not much dust is coming out because I got that fan on. All right, now that way I can stick my light in here. Now I'm just gonna go to the top where the heat exchanger is and start brushing that off. Brush down some of the sides. This paintbrush works really good for just brushing everything off in here. And there's a, a lip right here that's got lots and lots of ashes on it. You can run that right across there. Clean all that off. Do a lot of this without even really getting in there so you can try to keep from breathing all that dust in or have a mask on. And just have to peek in there from time to time to check it. If you keep this pellet stove real nice and clean, it should last a long time. But things are gonna start breaking down on you if you do not clean it. I have many other videos on cleaning this thing. Some that are just quick cleanings for during the season. Some are like, I have a video on like my daily, what I do, do to this daily when it is running. I have a video on changing this burn pot, video on changing the igniter in this thing, a video on how to check the igniter. It's been a good stove as long as you keep it clean. This part kind of sucks, but this thing will run forever. I pull these fire brick out. I like to take my little, little putty knife Scrape the rest of that ashes off of these fire brick. Do all three of them. Check them, see if they're really developing any cracks. If you are getting cracks, you can always go buy some new ones. Place that sells Harman, or probably just a place that sells pellet stoves, wood stoves, wherever you can get these a lot of places. Tractor supply. Oh, and if you've never changed your igniter, one thing I can say is don't. I don't recommend buying a cheap igniter. I would buy the OEM igniter that came with it. I know it's expensive, but the cheap ones don't last. That's one thing I know you don't want to cheap out on. At least that's my luck anyway. If somebody knows a really good one out there that's cheaper that lasts, let me know. And I do show you how to ignite this, or how to light this off without an igniter. Contain my, take my flame guard off, scrape that out. side really like this paintbrush some kind of some build up here you can see how I'm cleaning that off I don't really think that hurts in there you can try to scrape some of that off it's almost like a crease so I don't think it's gonna hurt if you leave a little on there I kind of feel like if you leave too much of this ash in here over the summer. If it gets any moisture in there, the ash is just gonna collect that moisture and help this thing rust more. It's probably a good idea to try to get as much of that ash out as you can. Definitely a pain in the butt. Through the season, I don't worry too much about having it in there because it's running.
Once you get all this kind of cleaned out, you're gonna wanna clean your burn pot. Scrape that out. You don't wanna leave all that, all that buildup in there. Take these sides. You might want gloves on when you're doing this, not rubber gloves. Now this is where I use that flat tip screwdriver to try to knock off some of that stuff that's kind of hard with this, the scraper that came with it. You can also check this. Uh, eventually, someday, this may start cracking, and it will run with cracks in it, but once them cracks get so bad, you're gonna probably gonna wanna replace this. That's why I did end up replacing mine. Kind of feel, you almost can feel if that's smooth or not. This is where I'm gonna take this little nail and I'm gonna push it down through all these little holes. You wanna keep them cleaned out. This is something I will do throughout the season. The brand new holes, this, at least the nail I have fits right down through them. You wanna do that. Just make sure they're cleaned out or your stove will have trouble lighting. Go through all them holes. There's I don't know how many rows. They go down into here quite a ways. One thing I want to say, when you're putting your nail down in there, be careful because right around here is where your igniter is. So you don't want to go smashing into there too hard and mess up your igniter. I've never done that, but I'm sure you could. All right, I am done inside my, inside this top portion. Uh, sticking your phone in there with the light on. I see I did miss some back there, so I'm gonna get that. Uh, I think I missed a little bit up top, but this is about as good as I'm gonna get it. Yeah, see, maybe, maybe right there I'll brush that out, but. This thing is like, I don't know, 12 years old, I think. So this is as good as I'm going to do it. You could sit there and keep working and working and working. But you could check your holes and your burn pot. But my burn pot feels pretty smooth now. So I got most of that off. I can feel a little maybe right there. Maybe I'll take that screwdriver and get a little bit more of that. But it's not too bad. Now I'm gonna put my flame guard back in and my fire brick. Throw this flame guard back on here. That fire brick back in here. And these little holes here, that's what's supposed to keep your glass clean, which don't seem to work real well, but I recommend taking your shop vac or whatever and trying to suck them out as good as you can, and hopefully that'll help. All right, now I'm gonna clean inside where my ash pan goes. I still have that fan running. For some reason the fan shut off, just do the same thing, turn it off on or unplug it, plug it back in. Sometimes I think it shuts off. Be careful scraping around your little gasket here. Pull that ash pan out. Put my handle up here. Scrape the ashes down in so I don't make a big mess. Set that aside. Put my, put my dust pan there and try to scrape out as much as I can in here. Now I got that fan running so be careful. You don't want to stick your fan or stick your putty knife or whatever you're using to scrape that out. I could probably really just start using this if I want, but uh, just don't put it inside that fan. You'll mess up the fins. I can use that or I can use this. I'm gonna do the same down here as I did up there. 
it's you just might have a little more creosote down here I think different pellets are going to make this different some will burn cleaner some are going to burn dirtier so if your stove looks worse than my stove it's probably because of the pellets you're burning if it looks better than my stove burning it through the entire winter let me know what kind of pellets you're using because maybe them pellets are a lot better put down in the comments what kind of pellets you guys are using what what are a really good pellet you think to burn in this harmony pellets if this video is helping you out please hit that like button and i really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel like i said i have probably another 20 30 videos on this same stove share this video if you can and share it on facebook if you have any questions i'll do my best to try to answer them before i go too far i'm going to show you sometimes i tend to forget i don't forget but i'll clean all that then i realize i forgot and i still do it we got to get up underneath the burn pot right there that door right there there's two wing nuts we got to loosen both of them wing nuts either with them pliers or you can probably do it by hand maybe you see i can do mine by hand but that's what them pliers are for so you might not need them just loosen them up and then a little bit more pop that off with your dustpan underneath there unless you still have a bunch of ashes ashes there don't matter maybe take that off you're gonna want to scrape just scrape that off with your little putty knife there hi old girl i see you okay go lay down go lay down um if you don't feel safe sticking your fingers in there you might want to unplug your stove or just be careful all you have in there is a igniter but I'm going to stick my finger in there a little bit, just pull some of them ashes out. There may not be a lot, but if you've never cleaned that out, it could be completely full ashes. That's not good, because it won't ignite good. That's about it. Now, I'm going to put this piece on my shop vac or my vacuum. I'm going to put that up inside that hole, and I'm going to try to block some of the hole off on the underside, and I'm going to put my hand up top here and plug all these holes that are there. And I'm going to try to suck all that, suck the little bit of ashes that are left in there out. Just like that. Now if you feel in there, you probably won't feel any ashes unless your vacuum cleaner sucks or doesn't, unless your vacuum cleaner don't suck, whatever. All right, let's put that cover back on. Shut that. You only got to go hand tight. Like that. All right, let me finish cleaning that. I'm just going to pretty much use this putty knife and this paintbrush. It's a pain in the butt. One of my least favorite things to do. Only thing good about this is I know it's starting to get warm out. If you have an iPhone, I'll show you how to turn record and turn your light on at the same time. You hit video, all right, and you swipe up here like that. You hit this little, uh, there's a little like lightning bolt thing. And you just click on. Now the light is on. And I can record at the same time. This is what it looks like in there. It's as good as, good as I'm going to do it. You can sit there and scrub all that crap if you want. But I'm not getting too crazy. Now, there, there's some up in that corner. I'd like to get that though. That looks like crap. Yeah, there we go. I can see that. How about that corner? a little bit over there. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna take that cover off right there. And we're gonna clean, start cleaning the exhaust a little. I gotta take the ESP probe out first. All right, I think it's time to unplug it. Oh, it's quiet, it's so quiet. This is where you may need your hammer. Hammer to get this off. Um, 
See, my, I never have mine all the way down because it's a pain. If yours is all the way down, you're just gonna have to try to pound on it. That should come off. There. You can take this piece and clean it a little better if you want while you have it out. Now while you're in here, we have, this is my fan that blows the exhaust out. You can try to take your paintbrush and try to brush that off as good as you can. Just careful of them fins. Just keep brushing there. Brush, brush, brush. This paintbrush should be all right. They're, they're pretty, pretty strong, but. Okay, there is some in the back. If you want to take either your finger or your little toothbrush, try to clean them back ones. A little, it's really, a little bit trickier. See, you could try with this toothbrush. Unless you have another little brush. I think I'm just gonna stick my finger back here. Try to knock off some of that dirt. If your vacuum has enough suction, you might be able to suck some of it out of there. Too bad. I'll just mess with them a little bit more because I'm only doing this once a year back here. I think that's all right. All right now, <clears throat> I might be able to see my ESP probe back in there. Can you see it? Your yeah. ESP probe is back in there. Oh, maybe, maybe that's it right there at the top. See that at the top of that square? I gotta go pull that out. All right, so we're gonna leave that cover off a little bit because we still gotta clean out the exhaust. Now we need to go to the back of the stove and clean that. Are you having fun yet? All right, let's go to the right side of the stove. And, oh, I should have stuff for my knees. Now we are going to clean in behind this door right here. We've got to take this cover off right here. But you're going to use that 5 16 inch socket. We've got to loosen this nut and this nut. Just loosen them up. You don't got to take them out. Just loosen it up a little. Loosen it up a little. That's why this extension's a little nice. And then there's one more we got to take out right Right here, you gotta take that one completely out. Don't lose it. Just set that aside. Preferably somewhere you're not gonna vacuum. Pull that, that door. Let me show you, it's real easy, but this door pops off of there. Set that aside. Now I'm gonna take my vacuum, suck up inside here. I do that a couple times a year when I'm cleaning and I do clean out this fine Right up inside here, there's a fines compartment. That's what I call it. Right for that wing nut. See this wing nut right here? We gotta take that wing nut off or just loosen it. You can just loosen it up. You can loosen it a lot if you want because it's gonna make it easier to put it back on. And you gotta watch putting it back on. If you don't get it on right, your stove will start shooting faults at you. And when you get that loosened up, just push up on it. Just push up and it'll pop right off. Now we gotta clean in there. And then I'll show you where that ESP probe's at. That's all there is to cleaning that fines compartment. Pretty simple. Hopefully yours was not jam-packed full because you never ever cleaned it. But that's something you might want to clean 
maybe even every ton of pellets at least, or at least one time through the season. I don't know how hard you run your stove, but at least I wouldn't hurt to do that every ton of pellets. Maybe you could just leave that dang this cover off. I don't know. I, I always wonder why I even put this back on, but it probably makes your stove a little quieter. Now, there is on that compartment, there's a little tab at the top. Let me, all right, there's a little tab at the top of that compartment that's going to go in that little hole right there. See that little hole? So I got to slap, put that tab down through that hole, and then it slides over that bottom bolt that sticks out where you have that wing nut on. When you put that all the way up there, I don't even really have to look up there anymore. I can kind of feel the tab. When it slides down over, you'll feel that tab sticking out. Oops, there, there we go. That's over that good. And you tighten this wing nut up. See, it should look probably similar to mine, how mine looks right now. See how that down, I don't know, it should look that. I can see a little bit of that round spot. You don't have that on right, your stove won't run right. All right, there, that's it. Now, now we're gonna pull out that ESP probe. Now you're gonna want out that other socket, the quarter inch socket. These are all quarter inch drive, which is really nice because these are really small. This is your ESP probe. See these red wires? They go back right there. It is your ESP probe. There's a little quarter inch nut or screw right there. And that goes inside your, where your exhaust is. Like where I was showing you that square, where it was square back in there. See, I always think I should move these wires a little bit. I guess I did move them all at once. I got a different zip tie on there. Just gotta loosen or take that one out. Mine's not even in there that tight. It doesn't have to go in really tight. I think I got mine. And that's gotta pull out. Don't pull, shouldn't have to pull real hard. It shouldn't come out of there. Yeah, there you go. Should come right out. Oh, I don't wanna lose that nut. Don't drop that nut down in your fan. That little screw, that'd be a pain in the butt. If you do, maybe if you had a magnet or something, you could probably stick in this. You can drop it in this fan right here. Should pour right out of there. There we go. That's your ESP probe. That's gonna sense different temperatures going through your exhaust. But we're gonna wanna clean that. And the reason I pulled that out, well, I pulled that out to clean this and that way we can run a brush completely through our exhaust here and not have to worry about messing that up. But you can use like a little green scrubby pad if yours is really, really bad. But I can probably just spray some of that uh, window cleaner maybe or something on a, a paper towel and then clean that off. That's what I'm going to do. Take that screw out. This thing is as old as my stove, never replaced it. It still looks like that. And if you did use window cleaner, definitely just dry that off. I probably not good for that metal. There we go. Nice and shiny clean. Now leave that out. Don't lose your little screw. Probably can stick that back in that hole. I'm done on this side for now, so um, before I clean that exhaust, I'm gonna go on the other side and take that cover off and we're gonna clean a few things over there. Don't forget your 5 16 inch socket. You'll need that for the other side. And you're gonna need your vacuum cleaner. All right, same as the other side. We're gonna loosen, loosen, and then take this one out. Put that aside so you don't lose it. There we go. Um, okay, over here, we are going to, I'm just gonna try to vacuum around here a little bit, clean this up a little, and down in my distribution fan right there. We gotta clean, vacuum that out, try to, I'm going to use that toothbrush or something to try to, clean them fins out a little. Uh, 
I don't know if you see this wire here, because that's another one of my videos. I have a digital thermostat in my living room that is upstairs that runs this stove. One of the best things I ever did is this stove. That way it runs off of the temperature in my living room, not down here in my basement. I have a video on that too. All right, I don't know how it is. I'm gonna take my toothbrush, just rub it on some of them, see. That makes a big difference. See, it's knock, still knocking some off, so I'm gonna go around that whole thing, which sucks, but I'm gonna scrub each one of them a little bit. I feel like I've never figured out a, a real easy way other than taking this entire fan off if you want, which seems like it would be a pain in the butt. <coughs> so <I'm> a, <coughs> I think some people do that. I've never done that. So let me do this whole thing. All right, that's it behind. On this side, you should be able to put that cover back on. So I hope you got your fan cleaned up. And one thing while you're doing that, just be really careful of them fins. You don't want to start bending them because it might goof up the balance on that fan and it's going to make all kinds of noise. But it's really not, it's a pain in the butt, but it's not that hard to do it. Especially just rubbing this toothbrush on there. I'll keep watching, I got a few more tips for rust. Now you took your ESP probe out, right? Cause you didn't skip ahead. I can't, I don't want to run my fan. Cause I ain't gonna do anything anyway. But I'm gonna stick this shop back hose in here. Come on baby, stay there. I'm gonna leave that in there just to, yeah, if it'll stay. There, I'll leave that in there just to try to suck some dust up. I'm gonna take this three inch flue brush and I'm just gonna shove it from inside my stove out and then, well mine goes out and then it 90s up. You can see where my exhaust goes right there. I'm gonna get most of that from the outside but I'm just gonna do this little small portion in here. It's gonna pull some ashes out of there. I could probably put my dust pan here to try to catch some of them. I'm gonna take this little square that I built, but that is gonna go, you'd have to have the same, my little, my shop back thing fits in there like that. And I can slide that in somehow, what's in here? Black bait. Oh shoot, I think I gotta put it like that. I think. Maybe it's easier to put it in. I made that just to kind of block some of the air when I'm, because I'm going to blow this out. Oh, there we go. Like that. And then I'll put my shot back in. And they're tight. I can push that back in there. Like that. Now, call this a shop vac even though mine's not a shop vac brand it is oh rigid this is where mine blows air out that's what i want to use unhook my hose and i'm going to put it oh i need that like this so hopefully you can do that with yours like that and we are going to blow that exhaust out but first i'm going to go outside and run that brush through it yeah i'm not going to be blowing air through it while I run my brush through it, unless you want to. But if you do that, you're gonna have dust all over you. So don't run your brush, then come down and blow air through it. So let me go out there and do that. Oh, if I forget to tell you, you're gonna, if you're using a drill, make sure 100% is very important that you're running your drill on forward, not reverse. Because when you thread these rods together, you know, if you go in a reverse, you could take your things apart and then get maybe your little brush may come off inside. I don't think I've ever had mine off, so I don't think it even come off, but 
you don't want this to come off inside your exhaust because then you might have a, it's going to be a pain in the butt getting it back out so always go in forward like if you don't know which way forward is here well when i pull this trigger i'm going to be going forward see that's forward like i'm putting a screw in all right this is where my exhaust comes out now i have a cup this kind of cover over mine so whatever you have take your cover off take your brush and clean that out this is probably going to be filthy see all that crap let's run this one inside here drill on it if you have a 90 on yours like mine goes in and goes right down to go around that 90 it's easier to be moving and then go around the 90 There we go. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get around that 90, but if you're moving, it goes. Now, I'm gonna thread this one on here because I need a second one. Now this will get me all the way back, all the way down to that other 90. I'm gonna put my drill on again. Get in there. <clears throat> okay. All the way in, all the way in. And I already went through that 190. Just like that. That's it. Now I am going to go inside. You will see how much crap blows out of that turn this on I'm, now remember, don't forget i'm blowing here we go all right that should be good enough now my next step is going to be, look at all that crap. I'm gonna take this plastic bag or anything else kind of plastic and I'm gonna cover this exhaust. Because through the summer, if you live like places like I live, we get a lot of humidity. If you don't get a lot of humidity, maybe you don't need it. You can either try to put your cover back over, or throw a zip tie over it, or wire, maybe even a rubber band. This is just what I do. I used to use an old bag from my pellets and stick over that so it wasn't clear. So hopefully that'll be all right. So if you got something, maybe a piece of, like a, maybe even a black garbage bag, just a piece of it, uh, something that was dark. I don't know if I like this clear, but that's what I'm doing there. I haven't really ever done anything with my cold air intake. I kind of let that there. You could probably cover that up too if you wanted. All right, that's all for here. All right, I'm gonna move this hose around one more time stick it on where i can do the suction and just turn that on just in case there's a little bit left there at the bottom that should work let that count a piece of wood out that sucker is done you can put your little cover back over just like that like that tap your little thing over that's all the further I go. Ooh. Oh, look at that. I must have had a hole in my glove. 
That really helped, huh? I'm gonna take my damp rid. I'll put some of these down in the description or you can buy them at the hardware store or Walmart. If you live near me, there's Kohl's. Open this up. Don't put it in like that. You gotta open these up and dump. All these little white things go in this, this cup. You don't put them in here, just stick them in that. Tear this open a little bit. Carefully, you don't fly, fling them all over. And you just dump them in there. Like that. And I'm gonna put that in my ash pan. Like that. And if you wanna go real crazy, I used to take some of this WD-40 and sometimes I would spray this on some of the parts inside my stove. Uh, I might even still do that. So let me get this in here. But that's gonna help help things from rust. Don't stop the video, because I got one more big tip here at the end that you don't wanna miss. All right, that's good there. Let me shut that. Ah, oh, it's pretty. All right, I think I'm going to spray some of my burn pot though with this WD-40. Just a little bit in there. I will take some paper towels or a rag I don't know if I'm going to do it too much right now because I got to fix the top of my stove because my kids spilt water all over it and it's rusting. So I got to sand that down a little bit and I got to get some black paint that is made for high heat. You can buy that at Lowe's in case you need to touch yours up. Um, but I want to sand that down and repaint that later. But I would take this WD-40 and wipe that with a paper towel or a rag all over some of my stove here. It helps keep that from rusting, especially if it's in your basement. Don't forget to put your ESP Pro back in with the quarter inch socket. There's a little hole back there. The screw goes at the bottom hole. Probe goes in the top hole. Goes in there like that. It doesn't gotta go on there really tight. Just snug her up a little bit. Boom, there you go. You can take your other socket, put that cover back on. This cover slides over. So you set your other screw. Don't forget about the screw here at the top. If this don't start, there's a, let me show you. If you're having trouble getting that screw started, you might have, come out of there, baby. If, you, if you're having trouble getting that screw started, there's a little piece here. Yeah, right there that that tightens up to. So if you bump that or something, that may be why. Try this again. They don't gotta go on real tight. Just snug them up a little bit. Snug it up a little. There we go, okay. That's all finished. One more step. Now either you're gonna take the shop vac you're using, clean it out, unless you don't have pellets. But I still have pellets in my hopper and I'm not gonna keep, I don't wanna keep my pellets in there all summer. It's just, I'm worried they're gonna kinda get a little bit too much moisture on them. So I'm gonna pull them out, put them in like a five gallon bucket. Hopefully they'll fit, I don't remember how much is in there and then put like a lid on it or something or put them in a bag and close the bag, whatever. But I'm gonna suck mine out. So you could either use the shop vac you were using which you're gonna have to clean out all the crap that you just put in it so you can take your pellets and dump them out, or I have another vacuum that I'm gonna go get that vacuum. So let me get that. I almost forgot to put my little cover back over. All right, I got my vacuum clean, and I have a bad feeling it ain't all gonna fit. Oh my gosh, that's heavy. All right, most important step. I hope you didn't, I hope you're still on the video. If you're still here, Thank you very much for watching this entire video because you got to make a nice little fancy sign that says damp rid inside ash pan, plastic bag over exhaust. If you did that and then write stay awesome and almost screw up spelling awesome to tape that sucker right there. So when I open this up, I'm going to see that in the beginning of the season and I'm not going to forget to remove this stuff and try to burn my pellet stove. Let me get a piece of tape.
Here we go. Shut that. See what I mean? Look at the top of my stove. I gotta clean this up and repaint it. I love my kids. You can put this, if you have something like this, put this in your ash pan too. That'll help remind you that it needs to go on. Unless you put yours back on. All right, if you made it this far in the video, thank you very much. I really appreciate it because most of my people out there do never, never make it to the end of my video as I can see that here on YouTube. But give this video a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment down below. It really helps me out here on YouTube. And hit that subscribe button. That also will help me out. And if I did put anything down in the description, all those links, if you click on them, that also helps support my channel. So God bless and have a great summer.